are the epitome of the trashy used car salesman. I'm just asking why you didn't think I deserved the decency of a yes H you're going. You could have done it as we were walking out the door. Code of silence after that, you would never had to deal with me again. I was very angry at you scheming against me. You get my vote tonight. Good luck. Oh, you win. And in the end, it was Helen's vote that helped push Brian Heideck over the top. Last night, the used car salesman from California won it all on Survivor Thailand, but just barely in a nail-biting tribal council that was split down the middle until the final vote was revealed. Welcome back to The Early Show. I'm Julie Chen in Los Angeles, where we'll be dishing Survivor dirt, hold the bugs, all morning long with Brian Heideck and the other three Survivor runners-up. And you can get in on the action, too. All you have to do is dial our toll-free number, 1-800-377-1718 for your chance to ask the castaways a question. Again, the number is 1-800-377-1718. But now let's head back to our New York studio with Harry, Hannah, and Renee. Lots of gasps. Lots of gasps here after that <laughs> My nails are now missing. I was like this last night. They're stubbed now. <laughs> Thanks, Julie. We'll see you in just a little bit. Now back to Julie in L.A. with the big Survivor winner. The plot to win Survivor Thailand began pretty early for this season's champ, Brian Heideck. As a matter of fact, his plan was in motion from the moment he sent in his audition tape. I control your emotions the minute you step foot on my lot. I mean, most people don't need to buy a car, but when they meet me, they want to buy a car. So there's my three. There's my three ends. One disposable, the loyal soldier, oops, and the good friend. <laughs> this is a business trip, strictly. My attire is just beard and uh, uh, bathing suits out here. But I'm still in business mode. Brian Heideck, congratulations once again. Thank you. Thank you. You were really good at most of the challenges. In fact, you won the last three immunity challenges. But one challenge that you won that you didn't look too happy about was the one where you got to see, along with your fellow tribes members, the videotape from home. Everyone saw how well you live. Did you think that could have, do you think that could have jeopardized you winning the million dollars as you were watching, your face dropped as you were watching this video from home. Well, you have to understand at that point, I had a choice of either taking them in, having a cold drink, enjoying our family, or leaving them out in the cold. So it could have worked against me, whereas they could have thought, oh, this selfish guy, he didn't even invite us in. I can't believe that. This Brian guy, well, we got to get rid of him, which I didn't want that to happen either. So that's why I invited everybody in, welcome them to a nice cold drink, and uh, let them enjoy my family. And heck, if someone's going to judge you on what you have, your possessions, then that just goes to show you how shallow they really are. Another piece of video that possibly your fellow contestants could have judged you on was um, something in the adult film category that you starred in. Did the producers or the contestants know about your career in adult films? Well, again, I, I want to point uh, back to the fact that it's all about perception. I mean, Michael Douglas, Bruce Willis does uh, $100 million budgets and they show their butt. I showed my butt for $100,000 and it's considered uh, something other than art. I considered it art, so it's all a matter of how you look at things. And um, sure they knew, sure they knew. But showing your butt, I don't think it's that big of a deal. <laughs> Happens on NYPD Blue, right? All the time, Okay. all the time. But as if that wasn't enough, you were making headlines with that. Last month, your wife, Cece, was arrested on spousal abuse. How, she was at last night's reunion show, celebrating your winnings. How are things on the home front? Well, you know, and like, like in uh, relationships, like in life, you, you run into a few roadblocks or you hit a few speed bumps. You just got to deal with them and uh, try to move forward. And she was looking wonderful last night. Looking wonderful. Yes, she was. <laughs> How about we take a call? Sure, sure. We have Lisa on the line for a question for you. Lisa, what's your question for Brian? Um, since... Since last night's episode that we saw and how you and Helen was, has she, have you all had any, um, have you spoke since then? And if so, how was, how was it? Uh, Lisa, it? Lisa, did you enjoy the show? Oh God, yes. What, they missed an episode. Excellent. Um, 
Of course, Helena and I have talked. Understand that we're very good friends. We're still very good friends. And uh, it's just one of those things that the heated, heated moment, all she wanted was a little apology. And I think I gave her what she wanted. Thank you. Okay. Thanks, Lisa. Let's move on to our next caller. Sean is on the line. Go ahead, Sean. Hi, Brian. I wanted to say congratulations. Thank you. Hello. Um, I just wanted to know, did it bother you or were you offended at all at the final tribal council when several members of the jury were calling you a trashy used car salesman? Um, do you or did you value their opinions? No, 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 no. That didn't bother me a bit. Uh, being in the used car industry or the car business in itself, I've, I've kind of gotten a, a bad rap. But until you actually meet me and actually have dealt with me on a transaction or so, I, I would change you completely in your perception of the used car salesman. So, no, it didn't bother me. It's just one way of uh, people trying to stab or use a sword accordingly with uh, words. And uh, can't let that affect me. Can't take anything personal. Can't take it personal. <laughs> All right. All right, thank you, Sean. Ryan, stick around because we have a lot more questions for you. And we will be right back with the rest of the final four from Survivor Thailand. This is The Early Show on CBS. In the final few days of Survivor Thailand, the winner, Brian Heideck, had to hold off a challenge from three of his original Chewy Gone tribe mates, Clay Jordan, Jan Gentry, and Helen Glover. Good morning. Okay, we just wanted to bring out Helen with Brian to show all of America that you guys have kissed and made up. True or false? Buds. I mean, buddies. is this genuine? Because, you know, last night, Helen, <laughs> when you gave Much that, <laughs> you put Sue Hawk's speech to shame, in my opinion. Okay, oh, I was mom. like... I had stomach cramps watching you deliver that. Um, but then when you went to go vote, you seemed really at peace with the answer that you got from Brian as to why he supposedly stabbed you in the back. Is that true? Or was it just that Clay gave you the worst answer possible that he wasn't getting your vote? <laughs> yeah. No. Um, yeah, yeah, I thought that was a little insane to, at that point, you know, not go after the vote. But my issue with Brian was uh, more of a, a personal nature, feeling feeling betrayed and that was something that I wanted to deal with with him like I said three knives in my back but only one really hurt and so after all that we had been through and the respect and the trust and the relationship that we had built I just I really wanted to get some answers for myself but the underlying vote I, I was confident in and that I never wavered on Okay. Welcome, Clay. Hello, Julie. You were just strolling in from the uh, celebration party. Uh, yeah, it's because, been a long night. <laughs> you know what? You won $100,000 sure being the first runner-up. Congratulations on that. Now, I have a question. Okay. If you had won that immunity challenge, would you have taken Brian? Yes. Loyalty or strategy? Uh, both. Loyalty, loyalty and strategy. You thought you could have won it? Well, I had a better. I thought I had a better chance to get Brian than Helen or Jen. They were they were strong. They were very well liked, very well respected. Yeah. Did you think Did you think you had it in the bag? Uh, no, I didn't think I had it in the bag. I thought I had a chance. Okay. Well, we have. I a was call real surprised at some of the issues. <laughs> we want to get to another caller on I the line. They've did. been calling in all morning. <laughs> Jeanette, go ahead. What's your question for these survivors? Hi, my question was actually for Helen and Jan. Um, I would Jan's coming up. Jan, can you hear? Because we got a caller, Jeanette. Okay, go ahead for these two ladies. I can hear. Okay. My question was for both of them. At the very beginning of the show, you uh, actually started cooking together and you were always together. I would have thought that you would have had an alliance. You sh and if you didn't, you definitely should have had an alliance. And then my next question is, um, why didn't you, you never was leader. You always was a follower. You kept following Brian, everything he said you both did, and he had you, he had claws in both of you, and if you, if you, once time you were a leader, you would have been able to probably win. I think Jeanette wants to know, why didn't you two, as women, take leadership roles and stick together? Uh, you know, that's a, it's, it's a tough thing out there. Anybody that jumps out in front to be an obvious leader, which, trust me, I had to hold back on. I mean, I, anybody that knows me knows I'm going to jump right out in front and take a leadership role. Out there, it's a whole different game. You do that, you just cut your throat. You're out of the game. They'll vote you off in a heartbeat. Jan, do you agree with that? Yes, I absolutely do. Um, Helen and I really kind of had an undiscussed bond together. Um, yes, we should have gone together. Um, and we could have 
formed a force because uh, there were some pinnacle times that we... Yeah, Helen, how come you didn't pull Jan aside, you know, right before tribal council when you were voted off, just to make sure that there wasn't some plan to stab you in the back? Did you think about doing that? Because at the time, I was told by the two handsome gentlemen on either side of me that it was... <laughs> to stab her in the back. <laughs> that it was Jan going. And that day, she was off by herself, and I thought she was crying. And I came up to both these guys, and I said, I, I can't do this. She's over there crying. Please, I think we need to tell her she's going. Fully aware that I'm thinking she's going, and it's me going. Ryan, I want you to wrap this up and tell me basically in a few words how you describe these fellow survivors who are sitting next to you. What is their strongest quality that brought them to the final four? Let's start with Helen. Helen, wonderful. Clay, Clay, <laughs> humorous. <laughs> humorous, a comedian, makes you laugh. Mm -hmm. And uh, Jan, just a great friend. And also someone who may have overslept because I know she's not wearing shoes. That's how late she was. Can we see a, sh a shot of your Christmas socks? Holiday season. That's okay. But we love the leather pants. Thanks. Nice job, you guys. Thank Thanks you. so much. And we still have something for you, I think, oh, Brian. Uh, I'm not, I'm yeah, I think I'm it's not called a million dollar check. That presentation. I'll be waiting here for you. So. <laughs> We're going to have that presentation in our next half hour. Yeah. But also ahead, there is more than to life and survivor. Welcome to a special split edition of the early show. Renee, Hannah, and I, of course, are here in New York, and Julie is hanging out in Los Angeles for the big survivor finale. Morning, Julie. Yeah, hey guys, I can give you about a million reasons to stick around this morning, but the biggest one is a gigantic check for last night's Survivor Thailand winner, Brian Heideck. Mark Burnett and Jeff Probst will be here to do the honors. Hannah? All right, though, up next, it is time for the big Check presentation to Brian. He's been waiting all morning long. We, we have to end the suspense when we come back after these messages. So stick around. And now on to some unfinished business. Survivor's creator Mark Burnett and the host of the show, Jeff Probst, are here with us in Los Angeles to settle some unfinished business with last night's winner, Brian Heddick. Namely, oh, a million dollar check. Good morning, guys. Good morning. And Good morning. we should make note that this is not a prop, because normally you see that big check, you know. This is the real deal. This is the real million dollar check that Brian earned. Yes, he did. Lots of patience and deception. It's a good combination. Do you have to sign it over? <laughs> I have to Should sign we, it. Can we, can we see the official? Are you shaking right now, Brian? I'm just looking at the amount. <laughs> Checking the zero. Wait, count the zeros. That's, uh, I, Mark's no joke with it, so I trust him completely. What are you going to do well, with the money? Um, thank you. Thank you very much. Thanks, Jeff. Nice work, Brian. Thank you. What are you going to do with the million dollars? <sighs> Double it, triple it, quadruple it. So you're not going to go buy, buy, buy. You're just going to invest. I'm going to take care of business, uh, take care of the people around me, <laughs> and take care of myself. But I do want to. It's so funny. He's, me, it, He's like, I it's do. It's so funny uh, how people are always talking about how much they want to spend it. Let's talk about what we're going to do with it, and how we can maybe double it or triple it. So that's what I want to try to do. Do do good with it, and uh, increase, increase, increase. Build, build, build. <laughs> On this guy never level. quits. He as, is right? a classic. Wait, on to the, the game's over. <laughs> yeah, really yeah, exactly. You won the check. That was the real life. <laughs> Jeff, you always say it's so hard to predict who is going to do well out there. Did you at any point think Brian was going to win this thing? Uh, about midway through, I did notice that he was extremely smart at the game, and and it. Not manipulating people, but at giving people what they needed. Brian's the first guy to figure out that Julie likes to have people nod back at her, and then, so he figures out how. To, and then he knows that I like just a little subtle handshake, so he gives me the little tiny handshake, and and he figures out what you need to get used car salesman. I mean, it worked. Mm -hmm. Best sell of his life. Mm -hmm. We're all under your Highline. spell, Brian. Highline used cars. Highline. Highline. Yeah. <laughs> Highline. Can world. I just see that check for one still. minute? Okay. Um, I will never hold a million dollars again. But so tell me, Mark, you have some props here. I just want to make sure it's safe. Yeah, okay, we have problem. this urn here is the urn that translated to a million dollars for you, and you brought it out here, Mark, because you're going to auction it off. Why? Where do the proceeds go? You know that is the real urn, and if you take the votes out, those are the votes that gave Brian his million dollars last night that uh, Jeff brought back from Thailand. And ever since we went to Africa and Lex went to the AIDS hospital, Jeff and I have been working with the Elizabeth Glazer Pediatric AIDS Foundation. All the props from every season of Survivor go on eBay, as do these votes and urn, are on eBay today and you can all, we've been auctioned and the, all the money raised goes to the, the uh, 
Glazer Pediatric AIDS Foundation. That's wonderful. It's the, it's the game show that just keeps on giving. You don't have to be stranded on an island to benefit from Survivor. You know, now we're done with you. I want to hear about um, the Amazon because that's the next time we need our Survivor fix. Tell us what we can expect in February with the next installment of Survivor 6. Well, it's wet. It's hot. It was, it was actually, we were talking, it was as hot as Thailand, but the rain rained like never before. And you have always, with Survivor, crazy animals. You have caiman alligators, you have piranha, which just go into a frenzy when they see anything near it. And you have the anaconda, which is a very scary snake. Plus you have these weird animals that I'd never seen, like the sloth. What's the sloth? The sloth is this, almost like a miniature bear with these arms that just go like this and they can hook around and they've got claws and they sit in a tree and you can't see them. They're so camouflaged, but they're the coolest animal. They move at about a half a mile a year. <laughs> <laughs> That's why they say stop acting like a sloth, like very slow, like yes. a snail. Did the weather affect your game? Because he was talking about how humid it is in Thailand. You guys are always sweating. I enjoy the heat. I enjoy the heat. You had that advantage over everybody else then. Julie, you will never get Brian. I don't care what it is. It, it, no matter what happens, he intended it to happen. You know what I'm saying? Is that true? A little luck helps too. Little you were the puppet master kind of controlling everybody out there? A little luck doesn't hurt. A little luck this doesn't guy hurt. doesn't break a sweat. No, he doesn't. Him and Richard Hatch <laughs> together. Right. He's moving in with Richard Hatch tomorrow. They're oh, having roommates. Oh, Wait, no, have you talked now. to all <laughs> the winners? I disagree with that. <laughs> <laughs> Congratulations Thank once you. again, Brian and Mark. Always a great job. You are the true master here, okay? And Jeff, you did an awesome, awesome job last night on oh, the live show. Thanks. So congratulations to you. Everyone's saying that. All right, but now let's head it back to New York. I miss you guys. Julie, we